My name is Bruce Plasky. I've been a coal miner for 12 years. I'm a third generation coal miner. My grandfather was a coal miner. My father was a coal miner. My son's a coal miner at this coal mine that I'm at right now. I've been on the mine rescue team for 10 years. Mine rescue team members are responsible for exploration to find missing miners that may be located in possible places such as refuge alternatives or behind barricades. I started out getting on that mine rescue team early in my coal mining career, uh, just learning the different types of gases, the different types of uh, trust, the different types of uh, just it being a special breed. Uh, it helped me learn a lot about the coal mine itself, different types of ventilation. I was able to advance myself within the coal industry and, and become a, a member of the safety department. I've held, held different positions on the mine rescue team. Uh, gas man at the beginning, I was a tail captain the following year, became a map man for three years, was a briefing officer for two years and became the trainer at, at our sister mine. In an actual event, a coal miner is trying to get out of the coal mine. Mine rescue team members are going into the coal mine to rescue them. As a mine rescue trainer, I am involved in making sure that everything is organized in an actual event. That could be to make sure everyone is there from, wh from wherever they may be. Packing the trailer, having all the apparatuses in order, tested, ready to go, all of your detectors. Mine rescue team members are uh, notified by means of telephone access, by means of email access, and by means of the computer room has everybody's uh, listing. Uh, you want to make sure that you are in, in the greatest shape possible to be able to solve a problem in a mine rescue event. Mine rescue training is very important. You learn different types of mine gases, uh, what could be a, an explosive limit of methane gas, different ventilation skills uh, to try and, and find someone that could be underground. My training makes me think more just almost in every situation where that you're working, that you're looking, you just you look at things different than you did uh, before. You are always looking out for the dangers, and if there is some uh, thing that's underlying, which there always is because you can get hurt at any time, that uh, you would want to hopefully uh, prevent yourself or the person that the person or persons that you were with that they would not get hurt also. You never know what situation you may be involved in if you had to go to an actual event. We try to do as many practices as possible to go over different uh, mine rescue problems. You have a statement, a, a problem, Locate where there may be miners missing miners in the coal the mine. You have 90 minutes to work the problem, good luck. There are 100 statements of fact. Uh, I create tests with those statements of fact. Uh, for every practice that we have. I walked into my first practice and they handed me a paper with uh, 10 statements of fact on it and I didn't know any of them. But, but the next practice, I knew them. Uh, there's a briefing that will explain what type of ventilation, whether you have an exhausting fan, whether you have a blowing fan, how many missing miners there are. The scenario for today is that we have a mine examiner whose normal duty was to make a weekly return, bleeder, and seal examination. And about 6.30 this morning, he went past our number 34 tracker. And at that point, he would have gone into the return bleeder system. And he should have come out of that return after about an hour's time. There is no radio communication leaky feeder system in that return. So his duty would be to make that run and then call out when he got the 35 scanner, which the scanner would pick him up, the tag reader, and let us know that he is out. The mine fan charts show no type of blips or any indication that we had any kind of roof fall. Have state and federal officials been notified? We have notified state and federal mine officials and also the safety committee. All of those personnel are in our command center. Is power off in the affected area? The power in the entire mine has been left on. The mine is ventilated with three large exhaust fans. Those fans are running. There is no power in the return bleeder system where the mine examiner was traveling, so there will be no power on in the area that you guys will be exploring. Is the area that we're going to be traveling, walking, 
or a crawling height? Our, our height will allow you to walk. It's about six foot to six and a half foot, although due to some heaving, you may have some areas that are a little bit lower, but you will not have to crawl. I was wondering what other teams are available. We would want to have at least your team underground and a team at the fresh air base, which will also, uh, with, through your help, determine where that fresh air base will be located. We have two backup teams available on site. That is excellent. Very good. Uh, I think we're about ready to start unless somebody else has any questions. You have five team members that take the field to go out and explore the coal mine. You have a team captain. That team captain is the first one out on the line. They are on a link line as they explore. I have two jobs currently on a mine rescue team. I'm the trainer for three teams and I'm the captain of one of those teams. As captain of a mine rescue team, I need to make sure that all the conditions that we encountered, if they're not safe, we need to make them safe. You just don't run in there and go wherever you go. There's a procedure that we try to follow and should follow as far as traveling ahead of you, tying across from you, and tying behind you. The team captain does a roof and rib test as he's exploring. You have two gas men. The gas men do gas testing of methane, carbon monoxide, and oxygen. They also have a stretcher with first aid equipment on it with a care vent to, to, to put a, a, pa a patient under air if need be. You have a map man. The map man he will take a, and put on a blank map as it starts all the items in every entry, whatever it may be, that map man has to put everything on his map. I'm given a blank map at the start of every problem and I have to record all the information for the conditions and uh, objects or whatever uh, that we encounter as we do our exploratory work uh, in the coal mine. The information that I am seeing and is relayed to me by, by my other members is very important and it can be crucial for the future teams coming in to have a reference that they know where things are at or if they have to make ventilation changes or if we're looking for bodies or whatever it may be, it's very crucial and you want to be accurate, clear, and precise. I relay it back to our tail man, which is our number five man, and he relays it to the fresh air base, which is so many blocks out by or depending on where he would be at, and in turn he relays the information to the command center which is located on a surface. You have a tail captain in the number five spot. The tail captain is responsible for radioing back to the briefing officer, clear and concise every item that they explore, whether it be an ignition source, whether it be low oxygen, irrespirable oxygen, whether it's uh, an explosive mixture, everything goes back to that briefing officer. The briefing officer is in a fresh air base. The briefing left. officer is responsible for ventilating the coal mine in hopes to rescue someone who may be behind a barricade. At the sump are the same as in the intersection, 20.5 oxygen, 0 0.5 methane, and six parts per million CO. Okay, looking from A to B and two, you have a, uh, your gas box readings are 0.5% methane, six parts per million CO, 20.5% oxygen. The briefing officer also radios to the command center on every move that's being made by the team. Command center, in two, looking A to B, you have a gas box, 0.5% methane, six parts per million CO. I wear a BG4 apparatus which I've worn out for five years, self-contained, uh, compressed breathing oxygen. It has an oxygen bottle in it. Whenever I put my machine on, it is just sack of nature because I've wore one for so long now, but uh, I am thinking that I am protected going into whatever environment. There's still apprehension that I'm so uh, nervous about going into a place because in your mind you think, well, it's low oxygen or whatever it may be, yet I feel that I have this barrier, that this machine that I wear, that I'm protected. You have to rely on your, your benchmen that are taking care of your apparatus to make sure your apparatus works sufficiently. We have uh, young benchmen on our team that are very good. The young guys uh, just are 
just amazing how fast they can pick things up and get good at what they do. And you, you have to have good benchmen because you depend on that unit. Just a little leak in that mask, if you don't have it tight enough, will put you down on the ground right now. I can care for my own machine. I can tear it down, I can clean it, no problem. I can test it. But if there's a problem, the benchman takes care of that problem. And it's just one of those deals where he's the man. If my benchman says that machine's good to go, I have no doubt I'm putting it on and I'll go into any atmosphere you want me to. My rescue contest help us in a lot of different ways. First, there's new technology that you pick up on. Second, you learn techniques. There's more than one way to do things, and you learn different techniques from different people just by watching and observe them. I've seen a lot of changes on mine rescue over the 10 years that I've been a, a part of mine rescue. Mine rescue has changed a lot in some ways and not a lot in other ways. You still have the basic components of a team, six to eight members that are underground, but what has changed is the technology. The examples are probably the heat thermal cameras that we have underground, the lasers that you could pick up underground, the detectors are a lot better for the levels of toxic gases. It's helpful, and without it, I don't know where we'd be right now. Definitely, there's a lot of teamwork involved. I mean, it's all teamwork, and it's all knowing your team members. Said the first priority in mine rescue is being a team member, taking care of each other out on the field, working together. You want to make sure that they're trained properly and properly with all of the uh, different knowledge and, and learn all the skills of mine rescue. Take your hard hats off. Put your face pieces on loosely, guys. You have a job to do on, on the team, but you also work with each other to make sure everybody's doing their job so everybody comes out safely. I'm talking to house. Talking to house, guys. Observe your sentinel. Check for your tightness. Bro. Please take it seriously. It's a lot of fun at times, but it's a lot of agony at times. Take your training to heart. The trust of a mine rescue team member is far above trusting just a regular coal miner. When you take that position on the mine rescue team, you know that you have to rely on each other. Uh, it could mean life or death. Stop! Oh. Buddy, buddy, are you all right? I'm not responsive now. Seat is safe. Stay this man. Buddy, buddy, are you okay? 722. Check if they're out. You can breathe or gasping. It's a special breed.